Hi, today we're going to be reading from the Gospel of Matthew using the Open Bible Living Translation. My name is Sheena Major and I am your life coach and I help you heal from unhealthy relationships and learn to love yourself. So let's continue. Matthew chapter 2. Visit of Wise Men. Jesus was born in the town of Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. About that time, some wise men from eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem asking, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We have seen his star as it arose, and we have come to worship him. Herod was deeply disturbed by their question, as was all of Jerusalem. He called a meeting of the leading priests and teachers of religious law. Where did the prophets say the Messiah would be born? He asked them. In Bethlehem, they said, for this is what the prophet wrote. O Bethlehem of Judah, you are not just a lowly village in Judah, for a ruler will come from you, who will be the shepherd for my people Israel. Then Herod sent a private message to the wise men, asking them to come see him. At this meeting, he learned the exact time when they first saw the star. Then he told them, Go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child, and when you find him, come back and tell me, so that I can go and worship him too. After this interview, the wise men went their way. Once again, the star appeared to them, guiding them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house where the child was with his mother Mary, where, and they fell down before him and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasure chest and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But when it was time to leave, they went home another way, because God had warned them in a dream not to return to Herod. Flight into Egypt After the wise men were gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up and flee to Egypt with the child and his mother, the angel said. Stay there until I tell you to return, because Herod is going to try to kill the child. That night, Joseph left for Egypt with the child and Mary, his mother, and they stayed there until Herod's death. This fulfilled what the Lord had spoken through the prophet, I called my son out of Egypt. Herod kills the children. Herod was furious when he learned that the wise men had outwitted him. He sent soldiers to kill all the boys in and around Bethlehem who were two years old and under, because the wise men had told him the star first appeared to them about two years earlier. Herod's brutal action fulfilled the prophecy of Jeremiah. A cry of anguish is heard in Ramah, weeping and mourning unrestrained. Rachel weeps for her children, refusing to be comforted, for they are dead. Jesus returns to Nazareth. When Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and told him, Get up and take the child and his mother back to the land of Israel, because those who are trying to kill the child are dead. So Joseph returned immediately to Israel with Jesus and his mother. But when he learned that the new ruler was Herod's son Archelaus, he was afraid. Then in another dream, he was warned to go to Galilee. So they went and lived in a town called Nazareth. This fulfilled what was spoken by the prophets concerning the Messiah. He will be a Nazarene. Matthew chapter 3 The Person of John the Baptist In those days, John the Baptist began preaching in the Judean wilderness. His message was, Turn from your sins and turn to God, because the kingdom of heaven is near. Isaiah had spoken of John when he said, He is the voice shouting in the wilderness, Prepare a pathway for the Lord's coming. Make a straight road for him. John's clothes were woven from camel's hair, and he wore a leather belt. His food was locusts and wild honey. People from Jerusalem and from every section of Judea and from all over the Jordan Valley went out to the wilderness to hear him preach. And when they confessed their sins, he baptized them in the Jordan River. The Preaching of John the Baptist But when he saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming to be baptized, he denounced them. You brood of snakes, he exclaimed. Who warned you to flee God's coming judgment? Prove by the way you live that you have really turned from your sins and turned to God. Don't say we're safe, we're the descendants of Abraham. That proves nothing. God can change these stones here into children of Abraham. Even now, the axe of God's judgment is poised, ready to sever your roots. Yes, every tree that does not produce good fruit will be chopped down and thrown into the fire. I baptize with water those who turn from their sins and turn to God. 
but someone is coming soon who is far greater than I am, so much greater that I am not even worthy to be his slave. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. He is ready to separate the chaff from the grain with his winnowing fork. Then he will clean up the threshing area, storing the grain in his barn, but burning the chaff with never-ending fire. Baptism of Jesus Then Jesus went from Galilee to the Jordan River to be baptized by John. But John didn't want to baptize him. I am the one who needs to be baptized by you, he said. So why are you coming to me? But Jesus said, it must be done because we must do everything that is right. So then John baptized him. After his baptism, as Jesus came up out of the water, the heavens were open and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and settling on him. And a voice from heaven said, this is my beloved son and I am fully pleased with him. Matthew chapter 4, First Temptation Then Jesus was led out into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit to be tempted there by the devil. Forty days and forty nights he ate nothing and became very hungry. Then the devil came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, change these stones into loaves of bread. But Jesus told him, No. The scriptures say, People need more than bread for their life. They must feed on every word of God. Second Temptation then the devil took him to Jerusalem, to the highest point of the temple, and said, If you are the Son of God, jump off. For the scriptures say, He orders his angels to protect you, and they will hold you with their hands to keep you from striking your foot on a stone. Jesus responded, The scriptures also say, Do not test the Lord your God. Third Temptation Next, the devil took him to the peak of the very high mountain and showed him the nations of the world in all their glory. I will give it all to you, he said if you will only kneel down and worship me. Get out of here, Satan, Jesus told him, for the scriptures say, you must worship the Lord your God, serve him only. Then the devil went away, and the angels came and cared for Jesus. Jesus begins his ministry. When Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he left Judea and returned to Galilee. But instead of going to Nazareth, he went to Capernaum, beside the Sea of Galilee, in the region of Zebulon and Naphtali. This fulfilled Isaiah's prophecy. And the land of Zebulon and of Naphtali, beside the sea, beyond the Jordan River, and Galilee, where so many Gentiles live, the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And for those who lived in the land where death cast its shadow, a light has shined. From then on, Jesus began to preach, Turn from your sins and turn to God, because the kingdom of heaven is near. Jesus calls his first disciples. One day, as Jesus was walking along the shore beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, also called Peter, and Andrew, fishing with the net. They were commercial fishermen. Jesus called out to them, Come, be my disciples, and I will show you how to fish for people. And they left their nets at once and went with them. A little further up the shore, he saw two other brothers, James and John, sitting in the boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets, and he called them to come. They immediately followed him, leaving the boat and their father behind. Jesus ministers in Galilee. Jesus traveled throughout Galilee, teaching in synagogues, preaching everywhere the good news about the kingdom, and he healed people who had every kind of sickness and disease. News about him spread far beyond the borders of Galilee so that the sick were soon coming to be healed from as far away as Syria. And whatever their family's illness and pain, or if they were possessed by demons or were epileptics or were paralyzed, he healed them all. Large crowds followed him wherever he went. People from Galilee, the Ten Towns, Jerusalem, from all over Judea, and from east of the Jordan River. That concludes our reading for today. And I just want to share that no matter what you've gone through in life, Jesus has called you. He's calling you now. For the fact that you're hearing the word being read today lets me know that he is wanting you to draw near to him. He called his disciples and they immediately heard that message and they they dropped everything they did and jesus is calling you today he's calling you to drop everything drop all the heaviness drop all the pain and sorrow and trauma leave it at jesus's feet let him deal with that and you move forward in his grace and his knowledge and his truth he's got a wonderful plan for you he calls you his own he wants you to dine with him. He wants you to get to know who he is so you can grow in grace. It is through hearing the word 
that your true healing will come. Stay with me as we continue through the New Testament and I will be reading real soon again. And always remember that true healing begins with self-love.